Okay, guys. Uh, for a lot of guys that were asking, I really didn't need to do this to my airplane since I haven't any problems, but uh, it is something I had been thinking about. But I have modified the FMS Tiger Cat. Uh, a lot of guys have complained and had some problems with the stock bullet connection, FMS bullet connection for the wing uh, plugins. I have uh, gone ahead and used the ribbon cable, which I actually agree with most everybody. I uh, uh, I prefer over the bullet connections. Let me pull this out here and see it. Okay. These boards are mounted right in a location, so reference these panel lines here really approximate because the links on this thing are kind of critical if you don't want to have to go make custom extensions. And you'll notice that the gap between the two servos here is different because they're both the same directional servo, but the square holes are mounted in the exact same location. This wing has hollow areas in it, and I've planned these holes so that they pop out right at the channel where all the wires were going to the original plug-in boards, which was right about here, so that you can redirect them from the channel into here. Now, in addition to this, which is a nice plus, is the throttle channel that used to be have to go through here with the battery leads I've made a custom hole that went across right here with a brass with a brass tube and now the throttle is connected here so the only thing here is the battery connections I've, I've got this all working now then there is a small dilemma with the retract and the setup of the boards and stuff like that and on here you're gonna have to use a reverser and an extra delay because the current FMS setup is reversed built for its own system it's reversed for flight line so you have to reverse the gear door servos that are in here or replace them with a reverse servo they are normal direction they would if you went reverse then you wouldn't need that but you'll still need a delay and you'll see what i'm talking about and keep in keep in mind this is upside down when it's right side up it's a little slower because of the weight of the weight of the retracts but I've got the retract system now working flawlessly. Notice how how really slow the main doors close in order to let those wheels get into the wheel well without jamming up. Okay, it's even worse when the plane is righted right side up. So that's why they're down so slow. All I have to do now is just make a, a hatch cover. I'll flip this over in just a minute, but let everybody see it again. Now you'll notice I also got my doors to open because I had to really, I had to readjust all the linkage here and the doors off center. Let me swing around here and I'll show you why and what, I've, what I'm still working on here. If you'll notice the servo horn in this, in this bandit thing here. I'm actually making an extension onto the stock servo horn so that I have more throw. Okay. So that it'll actually open the gear doors wider and there's more travel. In the stock location on that outer hole, it's just not quite enough. And that's basically a servo horn that's cut off, super glued over the top of it. But then I, I, I splinted it with uh, some leftover white wire so that it doesn't break off. Kind of a poor man's fix for an, a, a servo arm extension. But um, that's what I'm doing there. And that's just to get these gear doors open. Uh, the right direction. I'm actually trying to get them to where they're they're evened up and I'm still playing with that. Now then, if you'll bear with me for a moment here, I'll try and set you down here and I'll flip this plane over. Okay, here's the rough here's the rough setup. Keep in mind I have a gyro in mind that I did move. I did have to make a, a brand new wooden plate to go in here to mount the main controller board on and where this is originally where my receiver was and the uh, stock FMS board was directly below it. I had them stacked 
on top of each other with just a gap room. So now I've made an extra board back here that sits up a little higher instead of mounting it on the floor. You don't really need to do this. So that my receiver is a little easier to get to. So, and it's just glued to the bottom lips there. You kind of put it in cockeyed and then, and then, glue, and then glue it up there with foam tack. This board's kind of tricky to cut a new one and get in there and get the old one out. But there it is. Now the only connection, and here, I'm, I'm leaving this out loose. This is actually the FMS sequencer. You'll notice that I'm not using the retract door side, which is 5C. This basically, this connection right here to the retracts, to this board, is basically for the nose wheel. I could probably buy, get rid of this sequencer and plug this, um, plug this into the retracts down there. Um... Because it's not, they're not going to work together. They're incompatible. This FMS sequencer only really works real well with the uh, FMS system, with the way it was hooked up. It was designed with the board. Um, we actually, these are actually original stock FMS sequencers, except the output for is is made special for this Tiger Cat is reversed to all the other um, FMS sequencers you've seen out there, the six second and three second, and it has a longer delay on it to allow for this special gear for this airplane. I'll try and pull one wing apart here. Okay, there it is. Battery lead, ribbon cable. And the ribbon cable is coming in through the existing hole. It's also popping out through the original hole that was there. So the only hole I did on this on the airplane is on the bottom of the wing. Now, there is one extra special thing I need to show you about that, and I'll put it back down here. I forgot to zoom in on this while I was... Well, I had it upside down that most of you guys don't know about, but I do. This wing, from here to here, has four plywood ribs in it that go from front to back. Let's see if I can get in on it here. So when you're cutting it, there it is right there. You get a pointer on it. If you actually look right here, this right here is actually a wooden rib. And then there's another one here. There's another one in here. And then there's another one right about here. And there's about four different carbon fiber spars that you don't see that are embedded into the airplane because this wing is a two-piece hollow wing. And then, of course, the big, the big main spar, which is, which is obvious. So when you're cutting this hole, you're going to run into something right here. And what it is, is plywood. And you're going to have to cut it and make a notch out. Because you do have to cut this pretty deep in order to sink that board in there. And get it low enough with all the servos plugged into it. So that it won't push on the hatch cover that you're going to have to make to cover this up. Just like um, the flight line folks did with their airplane on there. So anyway, I just used the dimensions of the wooden board that it's mounted to to make the dimensions for that hole. And I cut all the way through the wing, okay, to get that so that I could access it from the side. After I got it all plugged in, the plug on the end right here, I cut it off and glued it back on. But I left it off. It just made it easier for making that hole if you actually cut all the way through the wing here and here. And then you have to slot it across here and then take this piece off, save it, and glue it back on later. It's, it, there's no structural strength in it. But I'll try and see if I can zoom in here for you guys. If you actually see, you can see the rib right there. Yeah, I'm trying to touch my phone and talk to you and I see it right there. Okay, underneath there. So there's basically a notch out in the rib for that to go on there. Now then, there are extra channels available with the flight line board. You noticed I have an extra power set right there. So if you wanted to add extra wingtip lights, these are all the stock connections. And this right here is only needed for channel 5C, which is the gear doors. Everything else came off of the stock FMS board and is plugged in to the same mating receptacle on the, on the, fly, on the flight line board. Why is this not focusing? Okay, sorry guys, I didn't realize I saw it get out of focus. This is only for the uh, gear doors, what I was saying earlier. Everything else is just like it was on the back of the stock FMS board. 
but you've got some extra bus pins there and you actually have two flap servos here these flaps on this airplane actually are connected through a y connector but the other the other servo that's over here has a short lead on it and it's underneath here if you actually wanted to run an extension on it and get rid of the y you could run two and and plug both flap servos into here and bypass a y connection really it's 50 50 either way i just plugged in the y connection because you still got a wire route in it uh, in there all right i hope this helps some of you guys that wanted to do this I had talked about this late last year, but I went ahead and did it on my Blue Tiger Cat here. I kind of like it. I wanted to try out the ribbon cable setup. A little cleaner, I think. Uh, I haven't had any problems with the uh, bullet connector problem, guys. And those of you that are, it's less than likely that the, PC, the stock FMS boards... Let me grab the old ones here, if I can find them. Okay, because I saw some talk about this on RC groups with the wings screwed to the airplane It is physically impossible for this to come apart It barely even backs off. I've looked at it and tested it several times You cannot get this apart or even almost unmate connection uh, Unmate the connection if the wings are bolted on what is more than likely happening is the servo connections that are going to the back of this are making a very weak, loose fit connection. And that's where people are having a problem and they're blaming the FMS bullet connections right here. It's actually not, it's just to the cheap servo connections that are made to the back and they're not making a good connection. All right, I'm gonna make some more videos on this later. I just wanna get it a quick one up from my phone since I just finished wrapping it up and doing the initial test and it looks like everything is working. Now I just have to clean up my wiring and um, get everything organized and spaced back out again. But it does work, and it's a nice system. Talk to you guys later. Bye.